Hey everybody. Got a few people joining in here. Give it a little bit of time before we uh, get everything going. Notice anything different? Bet you can't guess. Oh man. Make sure I've got the chat set up right here so I can see everything. There we go. Thanks everybody for joining. Can you hear me okay? Can you see me okay? Everything looking good? Good. Hey, Andrew. Hey, G. Johnson. Thanks for joining in. Well, while we wait for other people to get in here, um, today is just an AMA. Um, just ask me anything. Ask me anything if it's about engines, if it's about cars, if it's about whatever, anything. So, uh, what's everybody got going on on their side today? You'll occasionally see me reaching up like this. This is me reading the, uh, the chat, so I can make sure I get everybody's questions answered. Hey, Greg. Awesome, Kristoff. Glad you can hear me. So you guys might notice, while we wait for people to uh, answer some questions, I've got some stuff up on the bench here that I thought might be interesting for the live chat in case there weren't a lot of questions, because last time you guys actually didn't have too many. Um, G. Johnson uh, has a question. He says, I have one, Permatex. Which product do you use on all of your gaskets? Let me get it down here. So, it's a little, little covered up here. Well, anyway, as you can see, I handle this when my hands are dirty. It's the uh, Permatex Ultra Black. It is the maximum oil resistance uh, style. Um, it's for heavy duty oil applications, which all of us know the Mini is a heavy duty oil application. Um, and uh, it's high temp, it's sensor safe, it's really awesome. I strongly recommend picking up a big bottle like this um, if you have to do engines a lot. This one bottle has covered my Bad Wolf engine, it's covered everything on the early 998 um, so far. Um, and I've got, that doesn't tell me anything, but I've got a good bit left in there. Um, it actually stays a little softer, so you can see maybe it's kind of squishy. This is dry, um, what was on the can, so it'll stay kind of rubbery. Which I actually quite like when you put it on a gasket. Uh, let's see here, what other questions? William Murphit, hey man, you like my baby face? Decided to shave it for No Shave November. Gotta get prepped so I can just full beard. Mini Matt TV, I think that I just answered that. I shaved it. Chris Ruffle says, uh, we'll have to watch later F1 qualifying just started. <laughs> have fun. Thanks, man. Thanks for joining and enjoy the F1 races. Hey, Paul says, uh, Paul Jeffries has joined in. If you guys don't know who he is, he, um, he's sent over some really good stuff for me to rebuild. He's been really helpful in sending me all sorts of different products and, uh, and he is a top-notch engine builder. But Paul's question is, uh, or maybe statement, I'm here with Mark and Lucy Draper. Uh, we have been stripping the ERA Turbo Mini down today. That's exciting. Uh, tell Mark and Lucy I said hello. Josh says, hello, Cole, a young lad, 17, and was hoping to get a Mini this summer to build up as a project after finishing college A-levels. Should I buy from eBay or should I buy from someone I know? Um, I bought from a uh, online classifieds. I bought some, I bought a mini, my mini from Canada, um, unseen. I just went up there, gave them money and, and bought it. And, and uh, I mean, obviously I looked it over and everything when I got it. I would say that if you have an opportunity to see the car before you buy it, that would be great. And then on top of that, I would say that uh, um, really, really inspect the car when you get it because there's all sorts of hidden kinds of rust pockets and issues with these cars that some people overlook, they don't know about, um, and even the seller might not even know um, they're selling something that might have some problems, things like that. Da, 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 da. 
G. Johnson did the uh, Movember thing a, a number of years ago, won a few contests. That's pretty cool. Um, I normally keep some facial hair on, but I think I'm actually going to grow out like a whole beard this time. Um, I, uh, it does feel good not having anything on my face, though. I probably slept the best I did in years last night. Alex Toon says, why did you break Alex Toon's mini? Well, Alex Toon, you gave the mini to me, so you knew that this was a risk. You know how I like taking motors out of cars, so uh, it, count yourself lucky. I didn't take the engine out. Costas says, best mini size rims. Um, I'm partial to the 10 inch wheels, but uh, there is a lot to be said for having 12 or 13 inch wheels on the car, um, especially if you drive on the uh, highway or the motorway a lot. Um, the bigger wheels put a lot less strain on your wheel bearings. So long-term driving, things like that, it's a little bit better. It's not a ton better, but it's a little better. Mm, excuse me. Da, 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 da. William Murphy says, Alex Toon says he broke it so uh, so that Will could fix it. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Will, for breaking um, what uh, what I might have overheated a bit. Um, Laser Bacon Cruiser says, uh, what steps can I take in preserving the quality of my chassis and other metals in order to maintain the originality, minimizing the amount of fillers? Um, so the two subframes, the two main pieces, the front subframe that holds your engine and then the rear subframe that holds the back end of your car um, and, you know, all the suspension components, both of those can be removed from your actual, uh, the body of your car. Um, if you want to minimize filler, there really isn't any way around it. You got to weld in pieces and replace rust. Um, that's usually the best way to prevent using filler. Um, but for the subframes, <laughs> ooh, that was weird. Sorry, I'm using a little like a um, gimbal and it just had a little spasm there. That was crazy. Do, 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 do. Um, but as far as the subframes go, taking those out, um, getting the media blasted, seeing how many holes they have. Um, you could even just get it sandblasted. Anything that brings it down to the bare metal so you get a good look at it. Um, and then you can put things like, there's a product I really, really like. It's called POR15. It's P-O-R-15. Um, and they have a rust treatment. It's, um, it's paint over rust is what it's, what it's called. So you can actually like technically paint it right on top of rust. I normally don't, but you can. Um, that's a really, really good way to uh, prevent, you know, forward or issues down in the future. Um, G. Johnson says, I'm up here in Canada. St. John uh, is, I don't know what NB stands for. Um, got my 79 Austin Mini Clubman Estate 998 MG Metro from England. Oh, that's cool. So you got your cars from another country. And I got your car, and I got my car from your country. Christoph, uh, Christopher says, if you grow a beard, pro tip is to buy a proper beard oil helps a lot. Yes, I agree with that. I've had them in the past, and uh, damn, it just feels, it, it makes everything just so much nicer, and it also smells nice. G. Johnson says, thanks for your videos. Just discovered your channel this summer. Plan a rebuilding differential based on your, in part on your videos. Well, thank you. Um, I have, uh, well, maybe the video I just released on this differential just came out. So uh, that might help too. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen that yet. Um, Costa says, give me some examples for shock absorbers on 13 inch wheels. Shock absorbers don't care what size wheels you have. Um, but, uh, if you are looking for shock absorbers, Spax is a really good, uh, company that makes them. Um, I have Gaz, G-A-Z, uh, shock absorbers on mine. Both of those ones are adjustable. Can't really go wrong with either of those two companies. Um, Epic Bob says, what's the most power you can get using a standard A plus crankshaft and con rods? Um, it depends. If you've got one of the, uh, there's a turbo mini crank. It was a, uh, a stronger crank. It was treated differently. Um, and it was made for A series turbos that were sold from the factory. Um, 
I have heard of people running 150 to 160 horsepower on the standard equipment. Um, I don't know if that was with the standard pistons, um, but that's also with forced induction, decompression um, of your cylinders, things like that. So it, whether it's technically original, you know, in that case, it's questionable. Um, but with like a good solid tune and like lots of lots of work on your engine pushing around 100 horsepower 105 horsepower on the stock stuff with no uh, just completely naturally aspirated meaning no forced induction no turbo no supercharger um, you know you can probably re realistically get that kind of power out of it Andrew Parks says, what mini would you suggest getting on a tight budget, newer SPI or older-ish Mark II or Mark III? If you can find, so it's it's kind of a toss up. You get an older one like mine, I've got a 1960 and so it's Mark I. There's a lot less complexity to it. So there's a lot less stuff that can go wrong. Um, you know, you end up having a car, really very minimal electronics on the car. So there's less that can go wrong. So it's less expensive there but generally they're more expensive because they're older and getting rarer. Um, so later model cars are getting less expensive, but you have more things that can go wrong. You know, you've got a fuel injection system on an SPI or an MPI. Um, you can find them right before they went to the uh, fuel injection on like a carb setup. Um, that might be a good sweet spot. Finding one of the cars that was like one of the last ones to have a carburetor, um, but is a later model car, so they're less rare. Do, do, do. Paul says, hi Cole, it's Lucy Draper. Can you get some Bath and Body Works candles, please? Yeah, do you not have Bath and Body Works in, uh, in the UK? Um, tell me what you want. There's one right down the street from me at, my, uh, at the mall nearby. Uh, Muhammad says, what's the average cost of owning a Mini to build one from scratch and maintenance? Build one from scratch. Okay, so let's assume You've bought a car that has a 1275 in it. It's in relatively good shape. Doesn't need a lot of body work, stuff like that. Maybe you got it for six to 8,000 US dollars. Um, rebuilding the engine, if you need to, or if you really feel like you want to do that, it's probably gonna be around 2,000 US dollars. Um, and then body work, if you have any, suspension work. Mm -hmm. You're probably looking at like eight to ten thousand um, dollars just to get a good this is based in the u.s where it's a little bit harder here um, but that's probably a good price range to expect to get started and then maintenance is not very expensive everything's really cheap on these cars to repair i mean i'd say 90 percent of the stuff is pretty cheap let's see do 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 Mini Shows says, if you had to choose what Mini owned by YouTubers would you want to drive? Hmm, that's a hard one. So I'm thinking about all the different Minis that I, so here's what I'm thinking of. I've Tom Shorek's uh, car, the Red 998. Um, uh, Alex Toons, I've, I've actually driven one of his cars, the blue. Uh, <laughs> Dang, that gimbal is not working so great today. Uh, Alex Toon's uh, SPI, that was really enjoyable to drive. He's got that really nice van. William Murphy's car, I've actually driven that too. That was fun, that was at IMM. Um, I'd really, really like to drive, there's a 998 that the folks at Steve's to Motor Co have. Um, I think it's Marco's car that, uh, it, it's like this red with, um, Feel like there's like some sort of decal on the side looks like it's a fun car to drive um and they've done some kind of fun crazy stuff with it that's probably what i would want to drive next if i had the opportunity do, 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 do. vince mini france says hello cole how is your blue front paint uh painting can job going did you get direct blue or uh, with the clear um so my mini i did do my own I tried painting the bumper myself. That was almost, uh, I guess, a year and a half ago, two years ago. Ultimately, I ended up bringing it to a shop because my paint skills are subpar. 
Um, so a paint shop ended up doing it and so it turned out really well. DJSC, thank you for joining. It's good to see you. Costa says, I had a mini um, in Greece, extra hot engine, make a video with extra fan on radiator, thanks. Uh, so I did do a video on the extra fan. Um, if you go back through my, uh, my episodes, there's a whole thing where I show how to install an electric fan inside the under radiator shroud um, and uh, run that up so you can get some extra cooling when you're sitting still, things like that. The DJSC, it says, if it wasn't minis, what would it be? Um, I think that lately I've really wanted like an old Land Rover, old uh, um, like Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, just been really aching to get one of those, do some sort of big displacement engine. Um, I found that like my favorite thing to do is this, like engine work, gearboxes. I really like building these. I really like working on them. So like when I think about a new car that I would want, it's all about what engine it has and how fun it would be to work on that engine. Da, 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 da. Christopher says, you just got an angry wasp in your camera. Yeah, man, it, every so often it just loses its mind. I guess it's like trying to keep itself stable, but it's doing it, I don't know. Ilias says, a mini from a YouTuber, Bad Obsession Motorsport Mini, of course. Dang, I should have thought of that. I don't know why that one didn't come to mind. But, I mean, is it ever going to be done? No, I'm just kidding. Fake shots fired. I'm, I actually don't want it to be done. I just want them to perpetually build this engine in this car so I can watch it forever. Da, 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 da. What modern car do you think is as influential as a Mini or a Beetle? Whew, that's a tough one. A modern car? Hmm. Maybe... Mm, the first thing that popped into mind is like maybe some of the E30 BMWs, but I don't know, that doesn't even come close, I don't think. Yeah, I'm struggling to think of a car that's been as influential. Maybe the Honda Civic, that one, it's, it's kind of underrated, but it, so many people have a Honda Civic and it has like permeated as being the good, reliable, basic car. I don't know, that's had a lot of influence. Uh, Mini Shows says, what are your thoughts on the BMW Minis? Um, I had a 2007 Cooper S, that was the first year they turboed them. I really enjoyed that car, but they're completely different than old minis. And uh, like a lot of times people come up to me who have new minis and they're like, hey, you know, I've got a mini too. And, um, and I'm not one to like disagree or anything like that or be an asshole about it. But um, I don't know, it's just a very different, different thing to have a new mini. Um, like any of you who know who have an old mini, you don't just kind of bolt on parts to get extra power, extra fun, you know, things like that. Everything has work associated with it. You know, you can't come in and just slap on a new air intake system because, you know, when you put the air, a new intake on, it's fouling some part of the body, you know, anything like that. So, um, I don't know. It's just different. It's, it's more about modern car versus old car. Um, I love my new Tacoma. There's lots of people who do all sorts of crazy stuff to Tacomas, but the kind of work that you do to a Tacoma is totally different than the stuff you do on a Mini. Da, da, da. Trying to catch up all on, on these chats. It's kind of going pretty, pretty quick now. Do my best. Do, do, do. Muhammad says, do you believe that the newer Mini is still pure to the intentions of the original classic Mini? By the way, by the way yes, you have some fans here in South Africa. Um, I was just in South Africa last year. Uh, that was a wonderful trip. Um, to answer your question about newer Minis, style, yeah, it does a little bit. You know, the center gauges, and it has a lot of the things that kind of look Mini. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, I think it's a completely different car. Let's see. Popkit says, hey man, hey Luke, thanks for joining. What color should I paint my mini, Cole? 
it is the perfect color blue already. You do not need to paint it. It just needs a black roof. That's my, that's my recommendation for you. Ilias says, Andrew Parks, I would recommend a standard rubber Austin BL Mini 1000 from the 80s. If you live in Europe, these are less desirable, easy, easy to maintain, and still have carburetors. That's a yep, really good point. Um, and as 1275s get harder and harder to find, um, 998s, are, I think, are going to have a lot more modifications coming out for them and things to squeeze out that little bit of extra power out of them. Um, 998s are actually really, really strong blocks. Um, you can get a good bit of power out of them. Um, and uh, like they're great for things like supercharging and turbocharging um, or just like just pepping them up a little bit. They're not underpowered at all. Um, I would say that they're not overpowered either, but uh, they're good engines. Ilya says, which specific modifications would you do to a Mini SPI if you would use it as a daily driver? Um, couple things. One, I don't like loud cars. It's really annoying to me, um, but I want my car to perform well. So I want a really nice exhaust that breathes, but doesn't blitz my ears all day. Um, no matter whether or not it's a race car or my like daily driver, I just don't want my car loud. It's just my two cents. Um, so I might do an LCB, something that breathes better, uh, depending on whether or not your, your emission laws allow it. Deleting the cat is a, a good idea um, for allowing higher flow out the back of your car. Um, just a nice, S, a nice Canon intake might be good. Um, SPIs are, uh, are good cars in that they're reliable. Um, but modification, extra power pulling out of them is a little bit more difficult unless you get into like head work and uh, adjusting the cam, like putting a new cam in, things like that. Let's see here. Frank says, the license plate was taken off my 1972 Project Mini in 1989. I don't know how much it has been driven since then. Are there some typical things that you should do when it's been in a garage for years? Yeah, um, I'm gonna walk you out to my car and show you guys some stuff so that you can uh, maybe get some visual cues. Um, I went ahead and pulled the hood off just so that you guys, I didn't have to do that in the camera. Um, but uh, first thing I always recommend doing, check your oil, check the, uh, the level put new oil in it. So also replace your filter, it's down there. Um, fill right there. And then what I would do is go around your car and grease all of the suspension grease points. These are, uh, are a standard like um, grease nipple and just get a grease gun with a flexible hose end and grease those up. That's the pivot joints. So the pieces that um, are on top of your hub on your wheel down here. Um, there's a grease point here on the other side and then there's one on the back on each side as well. Um, you can see it gets greased right back there. That's where your grease nipple is. Um, really good thing to check. Um, jack the car up, spin the wheels, see if there's any sort of noise, any sort of grinding. Um, give them a jiggle. If the wheels move in and out like this or like this, then um, your wheel bearings might be bad. So that's a good thing to replace. Um, check the filter on your carburetor, make sure that's clean, your fluids on your brake and uh, clutch reservoir, check those, check coolant level. Hmm. I know that's a lot of stuff. I'm like, bam, bam, bam. There's a few, few things. Um, check to make sure your fuel pump works, the battery. That's a good thing to check every time um, you, uh, or when you get a new car. Um, battery is underneath on the side here. Um, yeah, I'd say that's probably the top things to check right away. Let's see. Muhammad says, in your dream garage, which everyone has, um, would you keep your blue mini? Yes. Yeah, I would. This car is never getting sold. I love this car more than any car I've ever owned. Um, I will change the engine. I'll change all sorts of stuff, but I'm not going to be selling this car. Not ever. 
Uh, mini show says, are you planning on going to any mini shows in England in 2020? Um, probably not. Um, I, so I went to IMM this year and let me just get back in here. Went to IMM this year, um, went with my dad and it was an awesome, really, really awesome trip. And, oof. but next year is traveling here with my wife. So we'll be going to, I think we're going to go to Iceland and do like an around the island camping in a, in a van. Um, that should be a lot of fun. And uh, I think that's probably going to be the only international trip that I'm going to do. Um, it is expensive to fly places from the United States. Um, let's see. So, 1275s are common in South Africa, from what I can tell easy there, Mr. Gimbal. It's going to be okay. Um, do, 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 do. Comment says, by the way, I'd like to say thanks for supporting the community by answering our questions. Absolutely, man. This is fun for me. I really like talking to you guys and, uh, answering what questions I can answer. You know, I don't know everything. Um, Mini Matt TV says, any other YouTube channels you'd like to collaborate with? Um, honestly, I'd like to collaborate with any mini YouTube channel. Um, you know, I, I would love to do collaborations with you, Mini Matt. Um, you know, I've done something with William Murphy. I've done something with Total Car Reviews. Um, I'd love to do something with Steve Stim Motor Co. Um, honestly, everybody, everybody. Gentlemen Racing Club, Gentlemen's Racing Club, um, Keith Miller over in, uh, uh, at Classic Mini Workshop. I, I just want to work with everybody. I, I like people. <laughs> Um, any parts interchangeable between a Morris Minor and a Classic Mini? I'm sure there are, but I don't know them off the top of my head. Um, Andrew Park says, top five tools you'd recommend for a mini mechanic. Um, okay, so I'm just going to give you a little visual here. So you can see, these are the ratcheting wrenches or spanners. Um, and I strongly recommend these three... These three will unbolt and bolt pretty much all the bolts on your car. It's a half inch, nine sixteenths, and a seven sixteenths. Honestly, those three wrenches and a socket set that would match those is a, one of the best things to own on your car. Um, it'll allow you to do basically 80, 75 to 80% of the jobs. Um, other tools that I would absolutely recommend. Um, I do like my ball joint splitter. Um, this is something that I've used many times and uh, splitting the ball joints can be really annoying if you don't have one of these. I don't like the hammering kind, they're obnoxious. Um, these ones just tighten up and it pops undone. Um, I really like that tool. Seeing if there's anything else in here that just pops out is a must have. That's kind of it. Um, there's not, the Mini doesn't use a lot of really weird parts, um, or really weird tools. So I, you know, you can do, get, a, get away with pretty much just general tools. I like a rubber mallet. I like a ball peen hammer and a torque wrench. Those are some good ones. Um, let's see here. Mini Dan says, any recommendations for painting the firewall minus peeling off where the brake reservoir is? Um, so what I did on my car, and I would say that if I could go back, I would probably not do this. Um, but it's held up really well. Uh, hang on. So 3M sells a professional grade rubberized undercoating. Um, this is what my engine bay is sprayed with. And it's held up really, really well. I mean, I'm, I've had my car, I guess, about seven or eight years on the road, and it's just held up. It's been great. It doesn't look as good as a painted interior uh, engine bay does, though. So um, that's the trade-off, you know. And the painted engine bay, I think that some of these you can actually spray paint over. Um, I'm almost certain that... Yeah, I don't know if you can do it with this one. Um, but some, you can actually spray the undercoating on, let that dry, and you can actually paint the undercoating. 
I, uh, I might try that at some point um, with my car. I don't know. Let's see here. Hey, Cole, now you look like Keith. Yeah, well, Keith's a handsome man, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm so white that I can't see my can't see myself in this camera. Um, the gentleman's motor racing team says seven mini part cells and adjustable clutch push rod. I like the idea. Have you ever used one? Yes, I have that on my car, and I do want to point out that even with the adjustable, I know that it sounds counterintuitive. No matter how much you adjust that post in there, it doesn't affect the throw of your clutch. Um, I talked to Jack over at Seven Mini Parts at length about this because it just didn't make sense to me. He made it make sense for me. I don't remember how he did that, but the, I'm assuming you have a pre-verto clutch. Um, I would, instead of getting the adjustable one, I would probably replace this with the uh, HD, um, whatever they call it, the really, really strengthened arm. Um, these just bend. You can't even see it, but there's a bend in this one, and it's just subtle enough to make the clutch act like garbage. Christopher says, here you get, here you get a little something. Thank you for the contribution. That is going to help me immensely with, uh, with this engine right here. This is the forced induction build. I have not announced what I'm going to be doing to it yet, so don't you ask. Some of you might know though. Um, but uh, I, any contribution really helps me out with that. I'm excited to teach you guys how to do a forced induction build. Um, never done it before, so I'm going to be learning too. So thank you. Appreciate that. Um, what car, new and classic, would you never buy? I would never buy a Reliant Robin. They're really funny, but not for me. And a modern car that I wouldn't buy, I, okay, I hope I don't alienate anybody with this, with this answer, but I absolutely despise Toyota Camrys. Um, they are just so boring. It's like, it's like if someone bought an appliance to drive. You know, it, they bought it like for the base need of just going from point A to point B with no pizzazz, no, no style. I don't know. I don't understand getting cars that don't actually have some sort of representation in who you feel like you are. A car is an extension of me. Frank said, did the 72 Mini come with a rod change gearbox? My, mine has one, but the hole for the stick looks modified. Um... I don't know the answer to whether the 72 came with it, but if your, excuse me, if your transmission tunnel or uh, the, the rounded part inside your car is, if it's rounded and not boxed, then it definitely came with a remote change. It did not come with a, uh, with a rod change gearbox. Rod change gearbox cars had a boxed uh, raised part that had the shifter connecting to it. Um, so that might be the case. Um, also, if you look closer to the uh, firewall and you see a hole that was maybe patched, it could have had a, 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 a magic wand shifter, which I don't have an illustration of one for you, but um, instead of having it, you know, a big unit that comes off like this, the, uh, the magic wand kind of came up. It was really awkward. Um, but I don't think they did them all the way in 72. What is the worst car you have ever owned? Um, I owned, I've had a, a few cars and I will say that the worst one I ever owned, it was not a, a bad car exactly. It was a Ford Fiesta ST. Um, it was fast, it was fun, but God, it drove like a brick. Like it was, it drove rougher than my Mini. Like you, you'd go to change the radio and it'd be so bouncy that you couldn't, you couldn't poke the, uh, the radio stations, you end up missing it and hitting something you didn't mean to. It's really aggravating. Um, didn't have that car very long. <laughs> Joker Scape says, Wol uh, Wolseley hater. Yeah, man, I just don't like how they look. I love that there are many and they get buckets of respect from me, from me because of everything that's inside them, but the look and feel of them, it's not my cup of tea. 
Um, Oscar says how to do rust work, primer and clear coat and paint. Um, you need to remove the rust. Uh, whatever your whatever rusty spot, you need to remove all the rot before you can start repairing it. So get the rust gone. Um, and then once the rust is gone, determine whether or not you need to fill it with, you know, new metal. If it's a small hole or small pocket, something like that, you might be able to get away with filler, although I prefer doing metal, um, then a primer, then the whole paint process, um, you know, the whole complexity of painting that. Da, 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 da. Joker escape, unless the tunnel has been replaced. Yeah, that's, I would imagine that's kind of unusual. Um, that's not usually the part that rusts, but I guess if they replace the whole front section or the whole floor pan, maybe the, um, the tunnel might be different. That's a good point. William Murphy says, would you rather be attacked by a horse-sized duck or a, du uh, a duck-sized horse? Um, definitely the duck-sized horse because the other one is terrifying. Jokerscape says front end is wicked though. I get what you're saying about the rear. I actually prefer the rear of the, the Hornets over the front. The front looks really goofy to me. Um, and I just, I can't imagine that they get very good airflow in there. Ilias says many hoods originally opened up not far enough for me. Are there any special hinges available that help open the hood more vertically? I really don't want to go with a quick release hood. Um, there used to be a company called Minovation that did hinges, um, vertical lift hinges that went straight up. So they sat in the same place as the original ones did and then allowed you to lift it vertical. I don't think that their company is producing things anymore. So I don't know if there's anyone that does vertical lift hoods anymore. Um, there might be. I don't know them though. Jokerscape says, rust spreads, cut it out, or do the job again a few months later. Yep, that's a really good point. Um, rust is like cancer. Um, if you don't get rid of all of it, it comes back. Kind of short and sweet about it. Muhammad says, which mini engine is your favorite? Which do you think James May voice ensues <laughs> gives you the fizz? Um, I, uh, so the perfect displacement engine is a 1293, in my opinion. So a 1275 block board just a little over to 1293 um, with some head work done to it. It is the perfect uh, the perfect uh, balance between displacement, um, extra displacement, but not weakening the sidewalls to a point where you have like an engine that could detonate at some point. Um, that's what I'm planning to do with the cylinders on this, go to 1293. Um, that's what my engine is, it's a 1293. Um, 998s are great too, which I point over here because there's one over here. Um, the 12, uh, the 998s can be bored over quite a bit without weakening the sidewall, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's also a pretty good alternative. <laughs> oh, got that crazy wasp in here again. Paul Jeffrey says the mini changed from remote to rod change in 1972. Well, there you go. So uh, you might have some weird hodgepodge, maybe somebody switched it, um, who knows? Drew's page says, I have an elf, they are really different to minis, different doors, A panels, B posts, hinges, side panels, etc., etc." I didn't know that that much was different, that's crazy. William Murphy says, DSN make bonnet hinge kits. Uh, I'm assuming that they lift vertical. That would be really cool. It's Boz says, uh, would you ever own a first gen smart car and turn it into a go-kart Hayabusa smart car, anyone? Um, I own a car that's almost as small as a smart car, my mini, um, and I would prefer to do something like that to a mini over a smart car, personally. Ilya says, do you ever plan on converting a mini to, Mile Mini to electric? Um, I don't have any plans to do that. I would love to do an electric conversion. 
Um, but I think the battery technology still has some way to improve and right now is, in my mind, not the right time to convert a really small car like this to an electric uh, engine. Mohammed says, would you, uh, would you know where to get a hood as <laughs> said in your American English where they have four headlamps embedded within them? I think those are only sold as fiberglass. Um, I don't know if there's any metal ones that are made. Um, I feel like I saw them on mini spares at one point, or maybe it was on mini sport. I genuinely don't know. Um, Jokerscape says, would you ever put an R1 engine or Hayabusa engine in a mini? I think I just, uh, I said I would prefer to do that over a smart car. Um, VTEX are neat, uh, but I, th I don't know, my personal opinion, I've driven a VTEC, I've driven a couple of VTECs, and I think it's a little too much engine for the car. Um, you can kind of address that with things like a limited slip diff or like um, power steering, things like that. I like small displacement that has a lot of power um, rather than something larger that has a lot of power. Um, so like a lighter engine. Um, the one thing about VTECs is that they uh, are heavy, so it really changes the way the Mini feels. A lot of the weight ends up, a lot more weight is up front, and I don't know, it just drives different. I don't know how to explain it. G. John says, says, do you have anyone who watches the channel drop by your house? Um, no, and that is not okay. Just want to stand, point that out right now that uh, if uh, anyone showed up at the house uh, from the channel who watched it, that is absolutely not okay. <laughs> um, but I have been driving in my neighborhood and someone said, hey man, I like your YouTube channel. It happened just a few days ago and that was pretty cool. I've never experienced that before. I need to open the window. The paint on these, I just painted these and it is really strong. Get some airflow in here. Jokerscape says VTEC has been done to death. I thought the same, possibly too much for a mini. Um, they are, they've reached a stage where the VTEC conversions have become really, really, um, they're not as Frankenstein anymore. So you, you can get things that are really tailor-made, really well-made and designed rather than something that has been kind of just pushed together. Um, there's a company down uh, in Georgia called Superfast Minis. Is it Georgia or South Carolina? Um, and they make a whole conversion kit to VTEC now, which is pretty cool, and it works really well. I think that the guys over at Steve's to Motorco use their subframes. I'm not totally certain on that, um, but uh, I'm pretty sure they did. Andrea says, it seems to have a, to rev up really high for my alternator to kick in. Do you have any advice? Um, your alternator should be, there. it runs all the time. So you should have power being generated even at idle. Um, and the faster the car goes, the more charge is being generated by the alternator. Um, if you are having issues generating charge, check your belt, make sure it's not slipping. Um, make sure that there's tension on the belt so that it's actually turning the alternator. If it is, your alternator might be going bad. Um, I would run it by like an auto parts store and they'll test the alternator for you um, if the car can run and get over there. Sam says, uh, let's see here. Hey, uh, thanks for sharing so much knowledge with us. Uh, internet denizens, um, I'm rebuilding a 1971 Clubman. I've just changed my head gasket and done the valve timing with your videos. That's great, man. Thanks, uh, thanks for the kind words and I, uh, I hope it all worked out for you. Hope it wasn't too confusing or anything. Um, do my best to explain this stuff, but I feel like sometimes I can't always get all of the details out without sounding boring. It's boss says a Ford EcoBoost engine, one liter makes a good makes good sense for a modern engine swap. If you put in too big of an engine in any car, the character can get lost and it just ruins the original character of the car. Totally agree with you. Um, and I've been hearing about those EcoBoost engines and uh, how they're pretty great conversions. Um, I don't think we have the one liter EcoBoosts here in the U.S. Um, but if we did, I think that would be great. Um, or maybe like a diesel conversion, that would be cool. 
The Gentleman Motor Racing team says, the sound pads on your wall, are they to keep noise in or out of your workshop? So neither, actually. Um, the idea here is that I wanna re reduce the reverberation when I'm talking. So I actually have them, let me just turn the camera here. I have them go up and then all the way around the door here and onto the other side. Um, and then I also have them on the other wall uh, right behind the camera. So the idea is that when I'm talking, like right now, um, there's not a whole bunch of my sound bouncing off everything and it makes the sound much more crisp and much more concise. Um, and so helps make the videos a little bit better, easier to hear. Christopher says, what do you think about the Triumph Spitfire, small British car? Um, I really like those. Uh, if I remember correctly, they're the ones that have the really tall wheels and the really thin um, wings over the wheels. I think that's so cool. Um, something about the look of having a wheel that almost is like, it, it gives the illusion that the wheel's almost going above the car line. I think that looks really neat. I don't know. Um, maybe I'm thinking of the TR7, actually. I don't remember now. William says, I love that. If you turn up to my house, that is not okay. Yes, that, that is, uh, I just want to make it clear because I know that I'm definitely not a big YouTuber, but there are big YouTubers that have had people show up at their houses and like, no, mm -mm, nope. Separation of YouTube and life. Um, AB says, what primer to use straight after welding? I don't have a good recommendation for that. Um, I have not done a ton of welding myself. I know how to weld, but I haven't got a lot of experience, so I don't think I'd be good to uh, recommend anything. Muhammad says, do you think that a Mini Clubman will ever be as close to valuable as the treasured Mini Cooper over time? Um, yeah, I do think they, I think any Mini variant is gonna get rarer and rarer, and I think they're only gonna go up in value. Um, the Clubman has such a distinct look. It's like a really, really European look to it. Um, and I think that's so cool. And I know that a lot of people think it's cool. Um, basically every American that I've showed a uh, Clubman front end on a Mini who's never seen a Mini before or who has and has never seen a Clubman before is like, wow, holy shit, that's really cool. I want one of those. Um, that whole look was really popular here. Like the E30 BMWs have that same kind of stri straight grill. Mm. Looks good. Joker Escape says, have you ever, have you done any videos on steering rack installation on the Mini? I gotta do this soon and I'd forgotten how long it, how I took it out. Um, yeah, I just released a video that shows how to uh, replace that. It shows it as best as I can. Um, it's kind of a hard thing to film. Um, but it's a full how-to on how to replace your steering rack. The old one is actually right <laughs> down here. Um, and my camera's freaking out again. You can see it right down here. That's the old one. Um, whole video on that. And I have another video coming out soon that is about uh, how to align the wheels and the new steering rack after it's been installed. I separated that into two videos because it would have been really long otherwise. Um, Joker Skipty says, do you think the point holds true about automa automatic minis? Um, so I don't think so, only because, well, so you can always put any other engine inside an automatic mini. Um, you know, take the engine out, put something else in there. With heavy modification, you can convert an automatic mini to manual. Um, but uh, most mini parts suppliers don't carry automatic mini parts anymore. Um, they are uh, really, really hard to get serviced these days, and it's just going to get harder, realistically. Mohammed says, which do you think was more influ influential, the Mini or the Beetle? Um, I personally think the Mini, um, and I will say that I think that because it was the first Mini, or first um, mass-produced car with that transverse engine, which is still used today. Um, it was hugely successful in making the cars smaller and not quite as long. Um, the Beetle did not do that. The Beetle was cool. The Beetle was a car, a people of the car, or, sorry, a car of the people, but uh, I don't think so. I think the Mini was better.
Ilya says, my rubber cones are a little bit dry rotten, so also my mini sits quite low standard. Um, do you recommend replacing them with the stock ones or are there affordable upgrades that I can do? Um, I would look for the genuine um, rubber cones. Uh, just replace them with those. You'll be more than happy with them. They're super, they ride really, really nice. I've got springs on my car, um, but cones are awesome as well. Um, you just have to replace them more frequently because they degrade. And, uh, um, but more frequently is like years and years. I mean, I'm not saying that you have to do it like every year or anything like that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's probably what I would do. You'll need a spring cone, comp so you'll need a cone compressor as well to complete that job. Just FYI. Andreas says, I also got an electronic ignition conversion kit. Where's the best place to connect it to get 12 volt needed? Um, the electronic ignition kit. Um, so are you talking about like a full new distributor? Um, or are you talking about the little module that sits inside the distributor that, um, that just converts the points to electronic? Christopher says, how often do you get out and get work done on your mini and other stuff? Um, I, the, so working on my mini is what brings me into my zen. Um, you know, doing stuff like this, working on my car, this is like, it makes me happy. Um, if you ask my wife, I'm out here too much. Um, but uh, I mean, I've got plenty of time to get out here and work on my own things. Everything I do on the channel is usually something that has to do with my car. Um, or an engine that I'm building um, kind of in parallel. Okay, so Andrea says points to electronics. So points used a 12 volt signal. So if you can use that original 12 volt signal wire, that should be fine. Um, the, let me see here. I think I've got an old distributor here that's been converted. loud sorry everybody um, so positive negative this positive end is it is connected to your ignition coil so your ignition coil is going to provide that signal that you need there um, and that should be the only 12 volt on there yeah this is your ground and this goes to your ignition coil there's no other 12 volt that you need and in fact, you really need the 12 volt that's coming from your ignition coil um, because that is a higher amperage. It's something, something ohms, power. You, you just need the power coming off of that to fire the ignition. My hands here. Point to electronic. Okay, so. Frank says, what is the big hole in the firewall for in the middle under the front window? Are there covers for it? So there are, there is a guy over in Japan called David Anley, Anley. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, um, but if you search for him on, uh, on YouTube, not on YouTube, Facebook, um, he sells a cover. Um, later on tonight, I'll add a link to the cover on this video so you have a reference to it. Um, but they're made for, you know, covering that hole. I made my own, it's just a sheet of aluminum screwed into the firewall. That hole there is so that you can get your speedometer wire and all of your electrics through the firewall and into the car to do whatever they need to do in there. Dirk Escape says, what are your thoughts on the upgrade where you remove the rear subframe and replace it with a load bar or whatever it's called? I think when you do that conversion, you have to convert it to coilovers. Um, and so the rear fenders, the parts that, that the shock absorber actually goes into, was not originally made to handle the strength of a spring as well. That's what your subframe was there for. It had the uh, spring or cone. Cone served the purpose of the spring. 
um, sideways, and the <laughs> subframe is taking the weight and the, uh, the load of that spring um, as opposed to the, uh, the towers back there. So um, if you did something like that, you really need to modify those fenders to make sure that they can handle the spring load um, when the car is going over bumps and it's sandwiching that spring up against uh, the, the top of that um, fender. Um, I don't think it's necessary though. I, I don't see any real major benefit unless you just absolutely have to have coilovers on the car. Drew's page says later cars use a six volt coil with a resistor wire built into the loom. Um, yeah, so the, the, that was like later injection cars, I believe. I don't think that was ever on a carb car. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong though. I'm just, that's just what I'm recollecting. Muhammad says, do you believe that making a racing mini destroys the car, or do you think it makes it, a dif it different, for example, a stock Subaru Impreza compared to a rally version? Um, I think, so, it's a, it's a, a balance. Um, every single mini can't be converted to a race car, otherwise you'd never have any original rare, or you'd never have any real original minis in the, their, you know, original state. But... The guys racing these cars, the ones who are converting these, you know, Mark 1s and, or, and even later cars into race cars, they're the ones who are arguably helping to keep the car alive. Um, most of the, you know, advancement on these engines, things like, um, like new clutches and flywheels, new straight cut gears, um, helical gears that are stronger than or as strong as straight cut gears, you know, think all these things like that wouldn't have come about unless people were racing and modifying these cars and finding ways to improve them. Um, because if they didn't, nobody raced them and uh, nobody drove them anymore except for the people who just restore them to spec. They'd never change. They'd never turn into, you'd never get any new parts for them. So I think it's a, a balance. Sam says, I think I might be the first person since 1971 to work on my car suspension. The cones are pancaked and almost every bushing is perished. Should I drop the front subframe and work on it like that? Um, you should be able to replace all the bushings and everything without dropping the front subframe. Um, if the engine's out already, um, I mean, it's, it's going to make your life easier. You'll be able to get to everything really easy, get, in, get angles on things that just are not as easy with it in the car. Um, but I can't think of any, I can't think of any rubber mounts that can't be serviced within the car that, um, could only be serviced outside of the car. Elias says, I want to set the timing because it's a bit off after replacing the rotor and so on. How can I do this with my timing strobe light? because I can't correct, uh, connect it to the battery, it's in the trunk. Um, so I connect my strobe to my ignition coil. Um, it should just have little clamps on it, um, and I grab the positive end of the ignition coil, and then I run the negative lead down to my grounding strap on the starter motor, um, or a bolt that's grounded on the body of the car, um, and that's enough. Yeah, that's what I would recommend. Drew's page says mid 80s had six volt on those cars just run new 12 volt feed from the fuse box around the loom to the coil. Well, there you go. Um, what's the GW t-shirt you have on? Looks like the MG Octagon. Yeah, so just so everyone knows what he's talking about. GW, um, this is a shirt from a friend of mine over in the UK, runs Guessworks. Um, he does transmissions and gears and he does engines and stuff too, um, but he's known for carrying all the really hard to find uh, bits and bobs related to gearboxes. Um, and guess works, uh, his name is John Guess. So it's kind of a play on words, it's clever. Velocity says, hi Cole, how many engine mounts support uh, should there be because mine judders when accelerating from zero. Thank you. Um, so their stock are, let's see here, on the remote shift, on the remote gearbox minis, there were one on each side on the bottom, 
and then one on the top right here the, with the engine block on top right here going to the bulkhead of the car. Um, and then the remote shift itself had a mount on the back, but since it was solid aluminum coming off the back, it created effectively an additional stabilizer. If it's a rod change box, you have one up here, two, one on each side, and then you have one on the side, it's actually on this side right here, that mounts to the subframe that helps the lower, um, it helps support it on the low side as well. Those should do it. Um, you shouldn't need any additional ones, but if you want it like really rigid and strong and tight, they do sell one that mounts to the, uh, the thermostat housing up here. Um, and then they make upgraded ones for the right and the left down here on the lower side for rod change boxes. Jokerscape says Matt Green has a similar shirt that's just an MG one. Yeah, I think that uh, I think it's supposed to be on a play on his name because Matt Green MG, but he also works on British cars. I think that's the whole deal with it. <laughs> Yeet, that's a good name. Very close to finishing my 1985 project. Any modifications you would recommend to improve the day-to-day -day drivability of my car? I'm assuming you mean car, not your cat. I hope you don't drive your cat around. Um, uh, new tires, just a good upgrade, uh, good replaced new suspension. Um, so cones, uh, pivot joints, um, any of the nylon there, uh, bushings around, all, around, all the way around. Um, trying to think, there's not a lot, if you are completing a restoration, most of what you've probably done already is going to make the car drive quite nicely, should at least. Muhammad says, what color would you think is better? Other than blue, would you get pick red or green? I would pick green. There's a lot of red minis. There's a lot of green minis too, but I like green minis more. Christopher says, why Iceland, by the way? Have you seen Northern Sweden and Norway? The Ice Hotel in, I cannot pronounce that to save my life, um, Sweden and uh, Lofoten in Norway. So, um, we do want to go to Norway after that. So, uh, my wife and I are not into having kids. So we travel a lot. That's what we spend our time doing. And, uh, so this year I went to IMM and later in the year for New Year's, we're going to go to Italy, but, um, we're going back to Iceland. We've been to Iceland before we went when it was snowy, which was unbelievably beautiful. It was really cool. Um, but we've always wanted to do that around the, around the island camping trip in the van. Um, so next year is our five year anniversary. Um, and so we're going to do that by celebrating that in Iceland. Um, we were thinking we might go to Norway afterwards. We have some friends who live there. Um, but I don't think we're going to be able to swing it time wise and money wise. Um, so after that, Norway is high up on the list of next things. And then I'd really like to go back to Italy in, uh, um, 2021 for IMM there. Ilias says, do you like mopeds? And what was your first vehicle you ever had or bought? Um, I actually had a newer fuel injected Vespa. I really like scooters, um, but our roads and our um, like city driving here in Charlotte, at least, is not really suited for scooters. People drive like out and like they're freaking maniacs and uh, it's just not worth it um, to risk it just to be able to drive a moped. My first car though was a Honda Element I loved that car. I know not everybody likes those, but uh, it was great for teenage me. Um, lots of camping trips in it. Um, drove it all over the place. It was a great first car. Jerk Escape says, I'm converting my 998 Auto Mayfair to a 1275. I have become Aware of the issue with auto gear selectors uh, are different ratios, but is there anything else you can think of that may need to get it running? Um, are you trying to put, I'm, I'm confused, are you getting a whole new block in gearbox that's manual or is the auto going, like how's that, how's that all working? 
Um, Paul says, did you change your carb needle as it was too rich? Yeah, so I've been fighting the, uh, the fuel needle game for uh, about a month now, trying to find the right one. Um, I'm getting something out of my box of stuff down here. I can find it. So, the new okay. HS6 that I bought um, is the same size as an HIF44, and uh, so it takes the same needles as well. So I have been going through needles and dialing in the fueling to get it running just right and seeing what it's like. Um, I am, I just erased what I put back in there. Um, I think it was a BDL, and that's been running pretty nice. It's still a little bit richer than uh, my previous ones were. No, it's not BDL. I don't know what I put back in there. Um, I'd have to open it up again and look. Um, but uh, the HS6 does seem to just be in general richer um, than like a dual carb setup or um, some of the smaller carbs. So it's something that I think it's just gonna be kind of rich. Um, that's what I'm kind of deciding on because the car drives great, so. Not gonna fuss about it too much. There we go. Um, G. Johnson says, I see from your walk around your car you have covers for the rear wheel grease nipples. Does anyone sell those anymore? I think mini spares might carry them. I don't know. Those are the original ones that were on my car. Somehow they survived my culling. I don't, um, back when I got this car, I don't know why, but I threw away a lot of stuff, uh, kicking myself over that now. But I was a dumb college student, so what are you going to do? All right, so Jokerscape says you're putting a 1275 block and box into a 998 auto. Okay, okay, so... The whole thing is being replaced. I got it. Um, I already sold the 998 to a mate in need and kind of regretting it now. Uh, didn't think about getting it re-registered or any of the possible issues. I don't, um, I don't know what the laws are like where you're at, but uh, um, I lost my train of thought. You're going to be really happy with that 1275, and if it's a manual, it's going to be great. You're going to be really happy with it. I forget what your question was before, if you could re-ask it, um, that would be super duper. Yeet says, have you done a servo assisted brake conversion on your Mini? I've just bought a, a servo off a later car to fit to mine. Um, was the original on the dual circuit brakes? Do you think it's worth it? So Paul Jeffries, I don't know if he's still in this chat, but he did a servo conversion um, and he loves it. You get a ton of extra braking power and it's not, um, and it's not as hard to brake anymore. I still have a single circuit, no assisted brakes, um, and I'm happy with them right now. Um, he did a pretty cool conversion where he took the servo and put it under the uh, dash in the uh, passenger side. Um, so it didn't clutter up the engine bay, and so the engine bay looks really nice and clean, but the servo sits inside. So he ran the brake pipes in to the servo, however all that works. I'd have to look at a diagram to tell you exactly. Paul Hotson says BDL is standard for HIF44. So that, that must be what I put back in there. Um, but it's happy right now, um, so I'm, not gonna, I'm probably not gonna touch it again. I might tweak the actual mixture with that needle. Um, but I created a, um, a tool on my website, classicminidiy.com forward slash technical, um, where you can compare fuel needles. Um, and uh, I, I'm really, really happy um, with that tool. It's something you can check out if you're trying to compare what curves you're looking for. And so I plug in all the different curves that I have from the needles I bought, um, compare them, and decide which one I want to put in based on that. Jokerscape says, Autos 1275, unfortunately, as I thought, uh, I thought re-registering it would be easier in UK strict laws to get around stuff. Wanted to know if anything needs changing other than the gear selector when I put the an auto 1275 and an auto 998 mini. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Um, they never sold autos over here. 
the first time I had actually been, I'd actually seen an auto in person um, was Alex Toon's Mini, um, and that drove that and got to experience that. I don't really know what else you might need, if anything, to go from 998 to 1275 if they're both automatics. Sam says, oh yeah, I bought a grease gun to grease the rear grease nipples. Now the grease gun nozzle is stuck. It spins freely and rotates on the ball, um, but I can't get it off. It's still on there. Thoughts. Um, you, so, okay, so the nozzle itself is on the grease nipple. Um, you just have to get some like clamps or something, in, like a set of vice grips. If it's if it's like broken off on there, you're just gonna have to yank that sucker off. It's, um, they're really, really finicky and like mine gets stuck on there. The only reason I can get it off is because it's attached to the grease gun. I'm gonna give it a good yank and it pops off. Uh, Yeet says, what exhaust system do you run as well? I have a Manaflow twin box system um, it's a side exit, so it exits in the same location on the rear of the car, um, with an LCB, a stage, stage one LCB on my car. That's probably going to get changed when I do the, uh, forced, excuse me, the forced induction build though. The exhaust won't get changed, but the LCB will probably be changed. <laughs> William Murphitt says, in response to Joker Scape, you will need the modified engine mounts as the auto subframe is different. You would also need a replacement pedal box and gear linkage. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward conversion. Sam, you could also, if you can get a socket around that um, and take the actual grease nipple off, you might be able to d disconnect them outside of the car so you're not running the risk of damaging the, the or breaking off the grease nipple inside one of the top arms or the rear arms. That might be a good idea. Adam says, how much power is your 1275 with the Evo 001 cam running roughly? Well, I don't have a rough number because I went and did a dyno. Um, this is still prior to getting the fueling just right. Um, I think there's a lot more power potential inside this engine, um, but I did max it out at 67 horsepower. Um, and uh, I think that I can realistically get it over 70 horsepower um, with all the stuff that's been done to the car. Um, but I just need to dial it in a little bit more. So I'll have to spend some more time on the dyno. Um, nobody here really knows minis. So any work that is done to them, um, I have to be at a place that lets me work on the dyno myself with them. Obviously they have to operate it, insurance, blah, blah, blah. But they have to let me get up there and tweak the fueling and tweak the, the curve, maybe change out the needle or the advance. So um, that's, that's what, where I'm at so far. Jokerscape says, would you buy your own Moke, Cole? Um, I don't know. It is really, really fun. Like, really fun. Um, I drove one at CMU recently. Um, you can probably check my Instagram story. Those should be there. It was awesome. Um, but I don't know that I'd buy one for myself. I really like minis. I really like the enclosed body of the car. The Moke would be really cool if I lived at the beach, something like that. Um, but I don't think that I'd get one for me. Um, they're also really expensive these days and, uh, and I just, I, there's other stuff I want to spend money on besides that. Chris says, any word on the A plus engine stand mount? Um, I don't foresee myself making, um, them in the future. It takes a lot of time to cut them. Um, and, uh, the supplier I had doesn't make they don't sell them at the same price they did before. Um, so I don't, it, until I have like a garage or somewhere that I can get a little bit dirtier, um, modifying those things inside this shop is really not very enjoyable. Um, and like it's cost prohibitive. So, you know, if I want to make one for, I sell it for $75, it takes me almost two and a half hours to make one. 
Um, so it just, and plus all the supplies, it just doesn't even out. And I don't want to gouge you guys on prices for these things. Auto Gear Garage. Hey man, thanks for joining. <laughs> um, Hilia says, what type of fuel would you recommend for a 92 SPI Mini in the Netherlands? Now regular gas has 10% more ethanol in it instead of previous 5%. This, there has been speculations that would be bad for old cars. Um, ethanol is not great for old cars, you are right. Um, but if it's the only thing that's available, it's the only thing that's available. We're in the same boat here. Um, some of our gas stations have 12% ethanol in some of their fuel. Um, I usually just do my best to find a place that has low ethanol and get a higher octane um, and just call it a day. Um, the ethanol is, uh, it just has, it makes it hard to tune the cars because it gives kind of like mis incorrect readings on your spark plugs um, and then also adds kind of like this soot buildup inside and on the head um, that I've not seen with non-ethanol fuel before. But yeah. So, um, you know, I've, uh, I've mentioned a couple times, I, for those of you who don't know, I am doing a forced induction build. This is a 1275 block. It's in really, really rough shape. It's got a lot of work that needs to be done to it. Um, and it looks even worse when it's next to something that's like been freshly restored. Um, but um, stay tuned on this because I have some really, really big, crazy announcements about this. Um, things that I've never done before. I'm actually kind of nervous to do. Um, and, uh, and yeah, if you guys want to see more about this, um, and you know, you want, you, you like that content, um, you know, any sort of contribution to the channel would be really helpful. Um, super chat helps me out a lot. Um, the merch store, things like that, because this is going to be a really, really expensive build. Um, it's the biggest <laughs> thing I've ever done on the channel. Um, so if you like it, if you want to see stuff about it, um, consider, consider supporting. It really, really helps me out. Scape says, what happened to the rare mini block you had and uh, um, ha was in a built-in heater for the block? Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is the gearbox that's going on it. And I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek. No one has seen this yet. I did it today. Let's turn this. Are you ready? Oh, there it is. Boom. That is the early 998 um, that I'm working on. You can see the little 1000 logo on the back there. Um, so this is still in progress, obviously. It's missing the gearbox, which is right here. Um, I, have to put the, uh, I have to do this idler gear shimming. Um, it's out of whack, so I ordered the pieces for that, um, and then that's going to all go together. Um, I'm really close to getting this done, so uh, I'm, I'm, excited to, I'm excited to share that with you guys. I'm excited to have it done too because selling it hopefully is going to help fund the uh, forced induction build. I hope. <laughs> um, Sergio says hi from Mexico. Hello, I have a mini 19, uh, 1975 998. Change the speed lever by uh, by one with reverse trigger, but now do not enter the speeds well. Can you tell me some reference video readings? So. Um, if I, if I'm understanding that correctly, you're having issues changing between gears. Um, there's something called bulk rings, um, and they help synchronize and allow the meshing of two gears that are going different speeds. Um, this is, uh, I'm trying to think of like a way to explain this that isn't like excessively technical, but those start to go bad. Um, so I would check first, um, Actually, I take all that back. Check your clutch, bleed your clutch. Um, make sure that the clutch, if it's, if it's never been replaced, you might need a new clutch disc because um, they go bad and then that can lot, lead to issues with changing gears. If all of that is good, is good and new, then you're looking at things that are inside the gearbox that are making it harder to move between gears.
Joker Escape looks amazing, Cole. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. It's taken a really long time. It, if I, it, and it, the, the length of time it's taken to do it is all completely because of parts. It's not because of any like major crazy issues that have come up with it. It's literally just waiting for parts, getting ready to do a job, getting a little bit further in it, and then finding out I'm missing another tiny rare part that doesn't, isn't made anymore. It's like, oh God, yeah. Joker Escape says, I thought Seven Minis had your back. Oh yeah, they do. Let me just be clear, Seven Mini is awesome. They always get me the parts really quick, but it adds up. So think about, um, so, okay, I need two new washers like this. And when I need one, I've gotten into the job, I've started it, and like, shoot, I need a different size washer, order it. It's usually two to three days coming from um, the other side of the country over in California, because that's where they're based. I'm on the East Coast in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, but then I'll go a little bit further in the job, find another part that I'm missing, order that, another three days, another three days. And all of a sudden it's nine days later um, waiting on parts just what, as they come in one by one. And the front door of my house looks like a shipping center. There are so many boxes showing up on it. Auto Gear Garage says, how easy is it to get parts in hashtag America? Um, it's really, I would say 98% of the parts are really, really easy to get. Um, either I get them from 7 Mini, they have them in stock, um, or they can back order them from their part supplier, which usually actually is um, like Moss or Mini Spares. Um, they buy wholesale from them. Um, and so it, usually I can get things within two to three days. The part that's sad is I can't just go down to the local parts store and say, hey, I need this gasket, or hey, I need this washer in, in this size, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that is just not an option for me, unfortunately. Sam says, sorry for bombarding you, but in South Africa, it's hard to find someone to ask. Uh, I want to make a dashboard like your Rally Dash. Is there a template available? Um, I don't know of any template. Uh, there is, I don't know where you are in South Africa, but there is a company called Journeyman. Um, they have a mini, they know minis. Um, they're based in Cape Town. Um, it's a really, really cool shop. They some really knowledgeable guys. And it, from what I've seen on their Instagram and on their stories and everything like that, they do have some pretty serious fabricating skills. So you might want to check out them. Um, it's called Journeyman. Um, and don't worry about bombarding me. The whole video is all about you guys asking questions. So, you know, no problems. Joker Escape says, get most of a job done and then need a part I don't have money for. Then when I get, uh, get it, I find I need another part too. And I generally have to wait till next payday. Yep, I mean, that's pretty much exactly what I go through every time I'm doing a job or a build or a video. Um, but it's just part of owning a mini. Sam says, one more, I looked in the breather filter that comes off my gearbox. Um, the wire filter had turned to mushy rust. What should I replace it with? Um, so in the past, what I've replaced it with is like a, a wire wool. Um, so something like uh, triple zero wire wool, something that's a little coarser, not ultra, ultra fine. Um, and I stuff it up in there um, and that's worked out pretty well. Uh, you don't want to put something so dense in there that oil um, or that air can't get past it, but you do want something dense enough to where it'll actually wick some of the oil and allow that to drip back down in there. Um, I was going to show you, yeah, I have a breather down here. I've got my, an old breather and... out. Well, I don't know if you can see that in there, but 
gets like a, a wire mesh. So that that is what you need. That's some gross oil. Ugh. Oh, you're in Johannesburg. Okay. So it might be, uh, I mean, that's a bit of a trek from Johannesburg down to Cape Town. It's what, 10 hours or so? Is that right? I don't really, it took a long time to get from Cape Town to Graffernet when we were there. Um, so I'm assuming everywhere in South Africa takes a long time to get in between. Um, but it might be worth taking a trip down there sometime. Uh, give them a call, tell them I recommended you and, uh, and see if they're willing to do something for you. Darkerscape says, I recently had to repair my rear subframe. A lot of people frown on this due to safety issues, but I'm confident in my welding, so I'm happy with it. Would you ever repair one? Um, I'm not confident in my welding skills, so I probably would not do it myself. Um, but, I mean, you have to... Frames are built with metal and welds, so um, if you are confident in your welding abilities, I think that it's probably fine. Um, but you just need to be sure that you're good at what you're doing. Sam says, you're a scholar and a gentleman. I put a wire sc a scouring pad in there. It seems to work. Yeah, that should work perfectly. Um, as long as the, the, it doesn't block the ability for the engine to breathe, you're in good shape. Jokerscape says, I just buy new. The only issue was one of the rear trunnion pins that bolt mounts to uh, the boot was damaged. Um, I would, personally, I'd buy a new one. Um, they sell them new, they sell new presses, they're great quality, um, and they're really not too expensive. Um, you know, there's a, uh, a time versus benefit, uh, kind of equation that I run in my head every time I do something. So it's like, is me fixing this worth the money that I might save instead of buying it myself? Um, you know, that, that's kind of what I think about, like, is it going to take me six hours to repl to fix this or is it going to take me 10 minutes to order it online and it's going to be just as good for 50 bucks more work makes sense for me to buy a new in that scenario. Sam says you were here question mark. Yes. Um, my friend had his wedding. My best friend in the entire world had his wedding. Um, he is from Cape town. He was living in Cape town at the time. Um, and, uh, I went to his wedding with me and my wife did, uh, went to his wedding in Graffernet. He got married on a farm out there. It was really, really cool. Um, he lives up in Norway now though. So, um, yeah, we went there, I guess we were there in March. I forget. I think it was March. Damn, I think this is the most I've talked in, like, days. <coughs> Sorry, that was loud. Jokerscape says, I found a secondhand one for 30 pounds, a reproduction one for 250, or a genuine good condition one for 900. Um, I think the reproduction ones are just fine. At least the ones I've seen. I'm assuming it's one from, like, a major parts supplier. I trust those guys. They wouldn't sell if it didn't work. Williams says... Cole, I'm off to ski. Talk to you later. Enjoyed this tonight. Thanks for joining, Will, and uh, looking forward to collaborating with you in the future. Sam says, holy cow, I wish I had known. Um, next time, I'd like to buy you a beverage. Thanks again for running the channel, Cole. I love working on this car and your help an awful lot. Man, thanks for saying that, um, and uh, and I appreciate you saying that. I would have, uh, I walked, I visited a few mini things while I was there, but most of it was for my win friend's wedding, so don't feel too bad. I probably wouldn't have been able to connect up anyway. Um, didn't have a ton of time in Cape Town. Most of the time was spent out in Graffernet. Ilias says, if you had to choose between the Manaflow RC40 dual stainless or stock exhaust on a 1992 SPI Mini with two silencers and without an LCB exhaust manifold, which one would you choose for daily cruising? Um, the Manaflow twin box is what I would choose for sure. That's what I have on my car. That's what I use and I daily drive it. And I'm really, really happy with it. It doesn't murder my ears. Um, I do have the LCB 
um, on it as well, and I'm happy with that too. Uh, there are LCBs that you can get for a uh, SPI Mini that sit below the, they connect to the link pipe where the cat comes off, I think. Um, there's whole connection kits, so there's some that go after the cat, then there's kits that allow you to put it before the cat and then remove the catalytic converter entirely. Low GT says, recently cleaned and reinstalled my HIF44 with a new throttle cable. Is there a good place to start the AF screw before I start, um, bef uh, start at before I start tuning it? Oh, I'm trying to think here. I don't remember how many turns. Um, I feel like I said it in my uh, tuning the NHIF 44 carb video, but I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. Those are one. That's one of those numbers that I have to look up. Um, a lot of times they're things that I just generally have to look up. I don't have it all up here. That's why Haynes Manual is awesome. Strongly recommend picking up one. But. I am probably gonna wrap this up here pretty soon. Um, you guys have any pressing questions you wanna ask me before I go? It's been about 90 minutes so far. This, I think this might be the longest live stream I've done, which has been really fun. I've been enjoying talking with you guys. Any questions about engines, suspension, what's coming up next on the channel, anything like that? I'm gonna give a second just to see if anything comes through. All right, folks. Well, I'm assuming since not a bunch has come through, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. It's been a lot of fun. Um, thank you for joining in, and uh, I will see you guys on the next video. I've got something coming out on Thursday, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and, uh, and, oh, Adrian. Did you get the pictures of me receiving the head? Yes, I did. Um, I've been meaning to put that into a video here. I'm actually thinking I might put it in the, uh, the video associated with um, the next update on the forced induction build, which should be coming in the next week or two. Ilias, a uh, few people have asked what is next on the channel. Um, the next thing that's coming up on Thursday is going to be the video on how to align your steering and align the front end of your car after you install a steering rack. It does also kind of cover the concept of aligning your car in general, so hopefully it will be pretty helpful for you guys. All right, folks. I will see you on the next video. Thanks for coming in and joining and talking with me. I will see you.